Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs, and today we are going to be talking about what your thyroid gland actually does. We're going to be talking about the functions, um, but specifically I want to focus on the what I am calling the top 10 most important functions um, that you really need to know. And the reason is simple. If your thyroid gland controls these functions, then, then there, and if there's a problem with your thyroid gland, then you'll experience problems with these functions. So it's really, you, you can kind of think of these a little bit um, like symptoms, okay, in a way. And so we'll, we'll kind of distinguish between those two things. Um, and by the way, before we jump in, I'm going to assume for this discussion that you already have an understanding of some of the basics of thyroid function. So you know that your thyroid gland produces T4 and T3. You know that in order for uh, T3 to become active, it must be converted from T4. Um, and you know that if your body has some problem with that conversion process, it may produce excess reverse T3. So that though, understanding those basic concepts are pretty important um, for what we're going to be talking about today. So if you don't understand those, um, go back to some of my other videos. They will help you just really understand the physiology of your thyroid and why it's so important. So let's jump right in. Function number one, your thyroid controls your metabolism and your weight. Okay, Not all of it, but a large portion of it. So the studies uh, that I'm linking to here which you can click on and you can look at, um, they estimate that around 60% of your metabolism is controlled by your thyroid, all right? And so let's just do some simple math. Let's say that your thyroid is functioning at about 50% of normal, all right? That's enough that it would be causing you problems, um, but it's not enough that you would die, okay? Because you need thyroid hormone in your body to just live. Um, so if you had a 50% reduction in this 60%, that means it could drop your metabolism by 30%, all right? And I'm not going to do the math, um, especially not right now because I, I didn't prepare for it, but I don't, know, I don't want to mess it up. But let's just think about that. So let's say if you had you were consuming a 2,000 calorie diet and you had a drop of 30% of that, that would be what, about 600 calories or so. So you might only be burning about 1,500, 1,400 to 1,500 calories per day day instead of the 2,000 that you should be burning, which means that just to stay sort of neutral in terms of your weight, your calories might have to be reduced at baseline, all right? And that's because of your thyroid. And we can talk about why that happens. Um, I dive into it a little more here, but just, just realize that T3, the active hormone, activates your mitochondria, which directly produces energy and it produces heat. And that's sort of how your body burns those calories on a daily basis. Okay. So that's number one. Some of the studies like this, thyroid hormone regulation metabolism, you can go to those and you can look into this a little bit more if you want to on my blog. Okay. Number two, the function you need to know, your hair growth, your thyroid is responsible, um, at least in part, for growing your hair. All right. What does that mean? If you have low thyroid or high thyroid, by the way, it could be either or, you're going to have problems with your hair. And usually that uh, the result is hair loss, but it also could be changes into um, your hair quality, the, your hair texture, things like that. In fact, I've seen hypothyroid patients that have seen me personally that they say that their um, curls have, you know, have straightened out and weird kind of things like that. And so um, it definitely plays a role in more than just the your ability to grow hair. So low thyroid means hair loss. Usually when you replace your replace thyroid hormone with thyroid medication, that should improve your hair growth. Now, it's important to realize that you, thyroid isn't the only thing that regulates your hair growth. Okay, there's a lot of other things. I would say perhaps even more important than, than your thyroid is iron levels, believe it or not. So you need to look at those. You need to look at other nutrient deficiencies such as zinc and selenium. They all play a role, but your thyroid does play an important role. Number three, another huge one, your thyroid controls or helps regulate your energy level. All right, so I want you to, I want you to think about a couple of questions. Do you have enough energy throughout the day when you wake up? Do you have enough energy even after you sleep eight hours a day? Okay. Do you wake up and are you able to get going through the day or do you need something like coffee or an energy drink to get you up and going? Uh, do you feel like you have a crash midday, usually around 2 to 3 p.m. So you, you get up, you have some coffee, it gets you going, but then 2 to 3 p.m., that's when you crash, and then you just, you know, you're feeling like in a slump, and you got to go back for a second round of coffee or some sort of caffeine. Uh, and then do you feel like you struggle to focus with, with your work schedule or just having, you know, the right kind of cognition and mental clarity when you're at work? If you answered no, or, or if you actually, I should say, if you answered uh, yes to any of these questions, then that is a problem. Your, your body is designed to have adequate energy and your thyroid controls a lot of that. The exact reason is not really well known, but it certainly has something to do with ATP production in your cells. Um, again, you can kind of uh, go into the studies and read that, read up on that a little bit more if you want. But just realize low energy may be a problem with your thyroid. Number four, I think this one might be one of the more important ones. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that your thyroid controls other hormones in your body. 
maybe control isn't the right word. Maybe let's just say it, it helps regulate. Um, okay, and so I kind of call it a, the master regulator of your hormones, um, the master hormone. You, people have referred to it in other ways, but um, you get the idea. The, the idea is that if there's a problem with your thyroid, then it may cause problems with other hormones. Okay, and so I, I use the example here of um, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and even cortisol. So just a quick example, um, if you have a thyroid problem, it's going to affect your cortisol levels. And that's usually as your TSH goes up, your cortisol goes up as well. But this also happens with estrogen, which is why hypothyroidism causes PCOS-like symptoms, which go away if you take thyroid hormone, only if that's the cause of it, I should, I should say. Um, and then, of course, testosterone, especially in men. So hypothyroidism in men can lead to low testosterone. So it affects all of these other hormones. Now, part of the, what I see happening with a lot of people is instead of going to the root cause, they find the downstream effects of, of these problems. So for instance, low testosterone, and they try and treat that with testosterone instead of treating that with thyroid hormone. So you always have to look upstream. If you have problems with these hormones, other the ones that I've just mentioned here, look upstream to your thyroid because if it is your thyroid, treating your thyroid will affect all of those things. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It controls other hormones. Number five, fertility. All right, this is another important one, especially if you're trying to conceive or um, you've had problems with miscarriages or um, anything like that. And so your thyroid, probably through its influence on progesterone and estrogen, helps with helps your body remain fertile and helps with conception. And I would say probably one of the biggest side effects of having thyroid disease is the inability to conceive, but also frequent miscarriages. And then, of course, it can impact low progesterone throughout the beginning of pregnancy and, and so on. So if you're having fertility issues, you will absolutely need to check your thyroid. And what you'll find, especially if you've been to reproductive endocrinologists in the past, is that they always, always, always look at your thyroid. And these doctors tend to be I don't want to use the word smarter, but maybe more in tune with their patients um, because they're more willing to look uh, at a narrower range of normal when it comes to the thyroid because they realize that people can't get pregnant unless their thyroid is functioning opt at an optimal level. And so sometimes you're a, a, thyroid, a good thyroid doctor might be a reproductive endocrinologist, but that doesn't really help men. It doesn't help a lot of other women, but it's just something to consider. So anyway, bottom line, thyroid helps with fertility. Number six, your mood. Uh, another really important one. So one of the hallmark symptoms of hypothyroidism is depression, but also anxiety. And so if you have any sort of thyroid issue, then that can lead to depression. It can also lead to bipolar disease or bipolar disorder, as well as anxiety. In fact, several really interesting studies show that treating with high doses of T3, we're talking like 50 micrograms per day or 40 to 50 micrograms per day, um, can help uh, treat uh, treatment resistant depression and also treatment resistant bipolar disease or disorder. So it's really important to consider, especially if you have those really difficult to treat uh, symptoms of depression or the kind of depression that just hangs with you. It doesn't go away. Um, it's not cyclical. It's just you're down all the time and you, and you feel like you're getting beat up by it. So anyway, thyroid controls your mood. Um, it's really important and treating it may improve your mood. So remember that. Number seven, your ability to concentrate and remain focused. So I said this previously that your thyroid helps you uh, prevent something that I'm referring to as brain fog. And so it's the symptom that a lot of patients experience. What they'll say is like, I just have problems thinking. I feel like my, you know, my, my thought process is cloudy. I'm not as sharp as I used to be at work. I mean, I've had, I've had female patients who are lawyers and other types of professionals and they can't, they can't function at work because they have to be sharp. They have to um, be precise. And so uh, if you're experiencing brain fog, then you need to look at your thyroid um, because it's one of those things. And this is a really sort of nebulous, uh, ambiguous symptom, right? Brain fog. Um, but, but it's a really important one as well. It can be difficult to treat. Um, but you definitely want to look into that if you have it. Number eight, it controls your body temperature. So this is this is pretty important, and it goes back to the one that we talked about with your basal body temperature. So if your body's producing more heat, your temperature is going to be higher. It's pretty straightforward. And if your your thyroid helps produce the heat, so it helps produce the body temperature. Uh, it also helps produce your heart rate. So the more rapid your heart rate, the more heat you produce, the higher your body temperature. So the lower your thyroid, the slower your heart rate will be. The the smaller amount of energy that you're able to produce, the lower your metabolism, the lower your body temperature. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, but it's important to realize because some people have a very low body temperature all the time and they're, you know, and, and a fever for them is a normal temperature for somebody else. So if that's you, that's not normal. Okay. So remember that. Um, look into your thyroid. Number nine, we talked about this just a little bit in number eight, but it controls your heart rate. So if you have a really low resting heart rate and you're not a conditioned athlete, that could be a problem. So if your heart rate's in like the 50s and, you know, let's say you're 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight and you're not an Olympic swimmer or something like that, that's that's a mismatch between your heart rate um, and and your weight and, and your uh, um, 
your conditioning. And so you want to look into that as well. And then lastly, number 10, let's talk about your menstrual cycle. So your thyroid helps to control your menstrual cycle. So abnormalities in your thyroid may lead to things like menstrual irregularity or, or heavy uh, menstrual flow, uh, things like that, lots of cramps, just anything related to your menstrual cycle, which is abnormal. Now, this kind of goes back to before when we talked about how your thyroid influences your estrogen and your progesterone. And so this is probably how it influences your menstrual cycle. So just the bottom line is if you're having menstrual irregularities, if you've been diagnosed with PCOS or PMS or PMDD, before you start treatment for any of those things, before you get on birth control or any of those sort of treatments, look at your thyroid. It might be upstream. So remember that. Okay, we'll talk, I talk about a little bit of the thyroid problems here. Um, I'm not going to get into those, but what should you do? Because that, I think that's the most important thing. What, what is your next step if you think you're at, your thyroid is acting up? Number one, go visit your doctor. Try to find a doctor who specializes in thyroid disorders. I have a special link um, here which goes over how to do that, what to look for in a thyroid doctor to start feeling better. So I'd recommend that you go... Um, you can find the link on my website. It goes through a list of doctors who are knowledgeable about the things I'm talking about right now. That's number one. Number two, get a complete thyroid lab test, which includes TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and your thyroid antibodies. You simply do not know what's going on with your thyroid unless you have all these tests. Number three, determine what is wrong with your thyroid. So what I mean by that is, do you have a partially sluggish thyroid? Do you have complete and overt hypothyroidism? Do you have an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Or do you have an overactive thyroid? Do you just have thyroid nodules? You, what is it? You have to know because then you don't know how to treat unless you know. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, number four, it, no matter what, you're going to want to eat healthy, exercise, and reduce your stress. These should go without saying, but you know, we're saying them anyway. Number five, you can consider sw supplements which help to enhance thyroid function, and they support thyroid function. So the basic things I was talking about before, zinc, selenium, iodine, vitamin A, uh, potentially L L uh, tyrosine, and even uh, adrenal supplements can help as well. So consider those things. Um, and I would say most, most patients do well um, when taking those things, and sometimes it's sufficient enough to reverse it low-grade thyroid issues, but not always. Um, number six, take thyroid medication if necessary. This isn't for everybody, but um, if you already know that you that you have a thyroid-related issue, then you may already be on medication, but just make sure you're taking the right medication. And then, of course, number seven, make sure after you do these therapies that you retest number two so you know what's going on. You know if you're improving or if you're not. Okay, so that's a really quick recap. I would say that's what, a 12-minute um, sort of assessment of why your thyroid is important, the 10 most critical uh, functions that I think it's responsible for, and then seven steps that you can use to um, to get started if you think your thyroid's acting up. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'd be happy to try and answer them. Um, I'd love to help you guys out if I can. So um, leave your comments and questions below, and I'll try to get, those, get to those as soon as I can. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.